Hey folks, welcome to Black Forge YouTube. Today I am joined by that Catafalque and mm -hmm. it's Tamas, yes. who is joining us from Hungary. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so today we're going to dig into some of your new music and talk about your, your historic history when it comes to music. You just recently released Alfuld, mm -hmm. I think Alfuld you said is how you pronounce it so yep. can you tell us a little bit about you as an individual and as the artist behind thy catafalque okay so i'm well my name is thomas well we say it thomas katai or no we say it katai thomas that's my hungarian okay. name because we we do it differently so yeah i am i am 47 and i'm I'm from Hungary. I was born here. And I think we started Dai in 1998. Mm -hmm. So like 25 years ago. And it was a two piece in the in the for the first 10 years or 12 years. There was two of us doing it. And then since 2011, it's, it's only only me with with a number of guest musicians around. That's great. So what kept you going this many years now? I just love music and I, I love creating and trying out new things and it's it's still very exciting for me. So I think that's why I am I'm still doing it. It's it's just it's just fun for me. Yeah. So I, I was very impressed with Alfu. I really enjoy that album. How would you describe it musically? Because I know you describe your music as avant-garde and a lot of people have different ways of describing it. How would you describe it? Well, there's no easy way to to describe it because of the so many elements you have it you have in it. And I well, this is why we say avant-garde metal because it's the easiest and most most simple way to to say it. I wouldn't call it progressive though because for me, like progressive metal is is more like about technical playing, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm just not I'm not that well equipped in that in that field. So it's it's more like my like avant-garde, I think, and it's it's just experimental on many occasions. But I can, it's it's absolutely normal if if we do songs like with absolutely nothing spectacular in them. In them, so it's just normal, yeah. normal stuff. Was there a concept to Alfu? Not really. No. I mean, the title title means lowlands. That's a that's a region, a geographical region in Hungary, in the southeastern part of the country. is called Alföld. It means lowlands or the Great Plains. Okay. The Great Plains, actually. And I was born there. And if there is some, some loose concept, it's 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 about that area, the vibe of that area, or the atmosphere of, of that area. But not all the songs are about this. So I wouldn't say it's a concept album, but probably there is some things that are in common in, in some songs on the album. Yeah. Okay. Well, what kind of music has inspired you as an artist mostly? If you if you had to name some of the genres and some of the artists, what would you say? Oh, well, well, I, well, I, well I, when I started making music or just listening to music or, or just appreciating music, it was like computer music back in the end of the 80s. Mm -hmm. I think when I was a child, we had a computer at home and there was this, this demo scene that was that was flowering back then, and there was plenty of new uh, tunes and and game music was coming up, and I was just mesmerized by them, and and I realized that I was able to do it myself with the help of the computer. Mm -hmm. So those are my first influences, and then and I was listening to Kraftwerk a lot, German band, okay. and, and Jean Michel Jarre, who was a French composer, mm -hmm. and these were. Definitely electronic music, both of them, and and most of most of it. And I didn't listen to to anything else up to the age of like thirteen or something. And then I I was exposed to to rock music and and then heavy metal, and and then everything was was coming. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, have you been in Hungary your whole life, or have you left and come back? Yeah, I, I was I when I was 33, I, I left for Scotland, United Kingdom, and I was living there for 10 years. And I I returned five years ago back to Hungary. Okay. That's great. So what instruments do you play? 
well, I, I play the guitar and the bass and keyboards on the albums, mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, it's just studio stuff. So it's, you can, you can trick, you can trick yourself with, with the studio things, but yeah, I, on, on the gigs, I play the bass and I used to play keyboards with my other band, but yeah. with Idle Fuck, I play, I play bass on, on stage. But on the, in the studio, I record guitars and bass and, and keyboards and sometimes vocals. Cool. That's great. So do you have a lot of friends in the music business there who, or maybe not in the business, but in music in general, who like to collaborate with you on your albums? Yeah, they, I, I have. I have many friends and, and especially when I'm playing live, it was, you know, we had this gig in like two years ago when i don't know if you know about that but there was this mesolith uh, live album released last year by season of mist mm -hmm. and it was it was a collaboration of 26 musicians so there were 26 musicians playing on the on the gig so yeah there were plenty of people there so i'm i'm very very happy about that that yeah i have many friends around here and who are just happy to to be part of this yeah so tell me a little bit more about this um, Al Fuld album. You, what inspired some of the music in the different blending of genres? Well, this time I was just one. I was about to to make some some more simple music, because previously I released Vodok and Naive, and the previous albums were were very experimental mm -hmm. and very very avant garde in a sense. And I just wanted to to make something this time that is is more simple and more straightforward, and more like my my early roots of 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 extreme metal, like death metal and black metal, mm -hmm. and this kind of stuff, and and less you know playfulness, just more darker, some, something darker this time. So so I was focusing on that. So I think that was the main inspiration this time. That's great. I love it. So I've got to ask about the photo that you have on your Bandcamp and. All right. Kind of your primary photo where you're standing out in a field um, yeah there's a cover photo of the album yeah yeah yeah. i love it uh it's a really yeah. cool photo what's is that a bobcat or a uh, you are i don't know how many how many people have said different things to that animal but it's a dog it's, it's a, a puppy. dog it's okay a puppy, yes wow it's, it hungarian. it's hungarian breed actually okay okay moody that's the name of the breed moody and that's a uh, uh, shepherd dog and that's a that's a puppy, and it was it was it belonged to the farm where mm -hmm. we we went to a, a photo shoot, mm -hmm. and it was a farm near my birthplace, and in the middle of the of the the Great Plains, and it was just a puppy belonging to the belonged to the to the farm, and it was just running up and down, and it was an accidental photography. I, I we didn't want to to include the dog, but it was just kept on kept on coming in. So I, I decided to to choose that that picture because it was so well. That's great. Uh, well shot, yeah. Yeah, it's a great album cover. It's really really cool. I it was that. unintentional, totally unintentional. But I didn't even want to to put any myself on the cover at all because I I, I think it's lame most of the time. But but the photo was so so good that I I decided to go with it. So who who had the idea to do it as the album cover? It was me because it was. Oh, okay. it, it wasn't meant to be an album cover, but it's then I, I just saw it and I said, okay, why not? Because it was yeah. funny. No, it's cool. You've got some very interesting art on a, a lot of your albums. Yeah. Do you have, do you commission artists? Do you find art from previous centuries? Sometimes, uh, I think the first one or the only one that was commissioned was, was the cover of Meta, mm -hmm. which is a painting. Mm -hmm. But it's not an old painting; it's a new one. It was, it was painted by a Bulgarian icon painter, and we. I, I just wanted something. I, I had the idea, and he, she, sorry, she made it, and that was the only one. The other ones, all it was either done by myself, or I just found it, or or a friend of mine did it, or something like that. So it's it's every time is different. Yeah. And this is why I think this is why they are so different anyway, because they are not coming from the same source. And okay, well, I think approximately half of them are were done by myself, but even those are very different to each other. 
Well, all the albums, the the covers are very different. Um, Vadak, did I say that correct? Vadak. Yes, that's fine. Cool. So, tell me a little bit about the symbolism with with that person sitting on the mountainside. In a way, it's is there any symbolism intentional for that? Well, you know, Vadak means like wild animals or beasts, mm -hmm. and it was it was also another accidental photography because we shot it when when we did the video for for a song for the previous album mm -hmm. and then it it was i i took the picture uh it was a, a picture of of my my then girlfriend who anyway painted the, the cover of of the previous album oh okay so it's everything is connected it's very personal everything is very personal here and and I, I like to to use these personal items. It is personal for me, but probably no one else knows about that. But uh, I think that that image like represents like her herself being like and like well, she looks like a looks like little animal on that on that on that image. I think it it looks like first it looks like a painting, mm -hmm. and she she is like uh, someone who belongs to that woodland. And and that's why I thought it would be a good idea to put it on the cover. Yeah, it's a beautiful cover. So yeah. previously, uh, before I we started this recording, we were talking about Thy Catafalque coming from Shakespeare. Can you tell us a little more about that and the origin for you? I was, I, I was at that time when we formed the band, I was attending to the university and I was an English and Hungarian teacher. Well, I was studying to be one. Mm -hmm. And I was obsessed with medieval English literature. So I was reading a lot of Shakespeare and Milton and Chaucer and things like that. And, and then I somehow I, I came across to this expression, like Call of Falk, and I, I, I liked it very much. And then first the band was only Call of Falk, and then I, I wanted it to be a little bit longer. So it, it became like Die Call of Falk. And it was, I think, a good decision because at the time we, I think there was a Turkish gothic metal band with the name just God of Hawk. Mm -hmm. So we didn't know about it, but it, it later turned out. So it was a good decision to, to make it longer. So uh, that was it. I was I was really reading a lot of Shakespeare in those times, and I was just influenced by by that, that world. So what are some of your favorite books in that genre? Oh, of course, I really loved Hamlet. That was that was the that was the 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 big one but you know later i just i was drifting away from that area and i i became just more uh interested in in hungarian 20th century literature and that was uh, my main source of inspiration since like the third album mm -hmm. okay and that's why i that's why we because you know the first two albums were in english and then from the third the the lyrics were in Hungarian from from that yeah. time and that's why that's cool very cool do you think literature inspires you in your music definitely yes it did and I think it still is because I I read a lot and and I I like I like all branches of art mm -hmm. and including literature and photography and, and like even architecture and all of these have some inspiration and motivation uh, for me. But literature is, is yeah, because I, I can use literature in, in the in the lyrical world. The inspiration is obvious, yes. Yeah, absolutely. So you were going to be a teacher, is that what you said? Yes. So what happened there? I was teaching for one year and a half, and then I I I left. So then I became something else. It was it was a practical decision. It was not nothing to do anything. We didn't think it was just. Uh, I was in a, a, a hard situation, so I had to decide if I if I stay at the school or I I leave and and I left for a, for a, for another job. And I was okay. but it was like twenty years ago or something. So I I was teaching only for one year and a half. Now, do you have a PhD? Yeah. What's as a teacher, I'm, I think, well, we we have we had a different degree back then, yeah. so it was not PhD, but it's a university degree, teacher of Hungarian and English language and literature. And that's oh, okay. 
man you are you are into literature that's awesome that's so cool i have a paper yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's great i love it so what do you do outside of music who are you outside of music uh well i i recently i really do only music well i have a job of course a day job and 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 that's it i'm a normal person but i think most of my time is dedicated to music now because well it's it's just i i like doing it and now that we started playing live it's a it's a lot of time and energy it needs so i think most of most of my time i i am just sitting here and just trying to sort things out tell me a little about hungary i've never been there so tell me some of the right. things you you would want to explain to someone ignorant of of the country like myself are you ignorant of of whole europe or just hungary or central europe or i'm just asking because it's, yeah. it's yeah, okay well i think just it's... tell me what you love about hungary maybe some mm -hmm. of the things you you see that need work things that as a native of hungary that you would want someone in america or elsewhere to know about the country i think hungary is a very nice small country geographically it's it's a it's a mild one so there are no big extremities here and it's very small compared to the usa of course and very small uh, number of people i think we are below 10 million so that's not a lot and most people visiting hungary going straight to the capital which is budapest mm -hmm. i think and it, it tourists just love it and i live here as well now and i think if you if you come visiting hungary you just come to budapest and you will just enjoy yourself for a couple of days for sure for a week or something it's very cheap compared well it's not so cheap anymore it used to be cheaper than than the western european cities yeah uh and it's well, I, I myself actually I am from the countryside, so I'm not really a a Budapest person. I'm I'm more from the countryside, and it's it's much more calmer mm -hmm. and and more chill. But I think you should come visit Budapest, and and that's it. And after after you you're done, you can go and visit them the, some some of the mountains and the lakes and and. It's it's just I think generally it's just calmer than than the USA. I, uh, I, but I, but I think I this is actually. true for true true for all the countries in Central Europe. So it's yeah. it's uh, very similar. You you can have some similar experiences in, in the Czech Republic or Slovakia mm -hmm. or Austria. Like they are really similar. Or Croatia. Croatia has a has a sea, so it's more. Oh, well, if, if you like the, the sea and the water, then it's much better choice for you, Croatia. Oh, I would love to visit. My sister travels a lot. All right. I, on the other hand, um, do not. I would like to, but yeah. that's the point I would love to, yeah. I think it's worth it, just for just for a couple of days, for sure. Of course. Yeah. I, if, if I make it to Europe, I want to cover a lot of ground while I'm there. I don't want to just be in one spot. Yeah, and if, and if you're from the USA, it's, it's very interesting because... Compared to the USA, there's very a lot of small countries that mm -hmm. are that that different to each other and different languages, different cultures. Within like if you if you get into a car and drive like four hours, five hours, you just go through Hungary, and then you're already at another country with a different language. So it's I think it's very interesting from an American point of view that yeah. it's just small little little things, separated things. Oh, I I hear very good things about it. Now. What would you say about the food? Is there is there Hungarian food that you think is. is really delicious that you would recommend? Uh, I, I'm not the right person actually talking about okay. that because because I I I'm not really into Hungarian cuisine. I'm not the typical Hungarian person in that sense because I'm like you know I'm I, I'm well uh well but but what I can say is you know everybody knows goulash. Do you know about that? Oh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, it's it's a typical Hungarian food, and probably you you will get it if you want to to you come here visit and uh, get to any restaurants and and you will get get one. And I think what what is very 
characteristic that we put onion in everything and and paprika which is which yeah. is the base base of everything probably we we cook that is not not sweet that's great so with chew and and the soups and and everything there's plenty of of food based on 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 onion and and red paprika so everybody's crying yeah everybody's it's crying. not very healthy actually i think the, the the whole food here is not very healthy but it it is it is it is tasty though okay that's good to know so spinning it back to die um mm -hmm. have you incorporated musical influence from hungary in your in your music do you are there any distinct sounds that you've incorporated that someone like myself would not know is hungarian well, i think the whole my whole background is based on, on hungarian folk music mostly okay and the, the the whole melody world that i i realize that i use most of the time this pentatonic kind of of tunes they are all based on uh, on hungarian folk music so yes there is a Hungarian background in in Dijkel of Falk, for sure, but instrument wise, not really. So it's 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 mostly in in the melodies. But I don't bring in folk instruments just for the sake of of using folk instruments. Sometimes I sometimes we have some like violins and and even. Even cithara, which is like a stringed instrument, which is a very characteristic Hungarian instrument, sometimes, but not very often. Okay, I think it's mostly it is in the melodies and in the in the general atmosphere and the vibe. Yeah, that's what I'm curious about because I know it, it probably is there, but I would not be able to distinguish it myself mm -hmm. uh, without knowing the music. Yeah. What about dungeon synth? You mentioned you liked electronic music when mm -hmm. you were younger. Have you gotten into dungeon synth much? I was I was listening to that kind of music back in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I remember the first Mortis albums, like the first four, and and still I'm I'm uh, following some of the bands. I don't even know the names, but I I I listen to to those because there are still bands in that. Oh. and it's fine. I I I appreciate the, the genre, so I I'm, I'm still listening to it up to a degree so yeah i i was i was i think in the in the end late 90s that's that's when that's when i was listening a lot of okay. that kind of so i recently interviewed an artist um he goes by a livelon he's a i i guess you would call it fantasy music some mm -hmm. slash dungeon synth that's okay. in that genre and I'm recently trying to get more coverage on those kinds of artists as well, not just metal artists. Um, I find mm -hmm. that music fascinating. But he referenced how you are one of his favorite artists. Cool. And so if you check anyone out in that genre, I highly recommend Elivalon, E-L-Y-V-I-L-O-N, Elivalon. Is that from the USA? He is. He's in um, the northern Midwest. Okay. Beautiful music it's it's very medieval um mm -hmm. it's it's beautiful music but i just wanted you to know that you. he really admires your work and he he spoke highly of you so oh that's cool i think we even have a, a label here releasing dungeon synth on on tapes okay do you know the name of that one because i i've connected well i've tried to connect with a few of it's them kaidum tower that's the name of the okay. label kaidum with k I don't, I don't know stuff. if I've seen them, but I might have to look them up. That's a, that's a very small label, but they're releasing tapes uh, in in that style. Yeah, yeah. I've just there. There are some beautiful artists like Frere and um, Paths to, of the Eternal. They're they're all over Europe and and other places as well. So I'm finding so much good music, especially in the underground metal world. Just um, there's so much good music that I didn't know about years ago that i've been introduced to and it it's fascinating how many musicians are out there that are so talented like yourself who are so talented that you don't know about sometimes and have you thought about playing in north america have you thought about a tour here at some point of course we have thought about but you know it's this this uh 
working visa situation is just incredible. Yeah. So it's, it's like impossible for us to play there at the moment because we realize that the costs are just extremely high. Not, not well, traveling itself, of course, that's one thing. But the other thing is the, the visa, which is like extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of us. So there, we are eight people in the band and we need like two more and three people, three more coming with us. And it's, it's a lot. So there's no way anyone could finance it at the moment. Yeah. I think many bands don't, don't do the USA anymore because of this from Europe. That's unfortunate because I think your music, especially getting more exposure to North America, not just digitally, but getting exposure playing live, I think you would be have a huge following here. We we were we have been invited over, but then it turns out that it's just it's not not possible at all at yeah. the moment. Yeah. That's unfortunate. I hate that. I would love to see your band. That would be awesome. You have to come over here. Maybe you know what I think with talking with you, um, you have a, a guest room. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just well, kidding. It, it can be sorted out. It's not an issue actually. So it's much more easier than. I'll need to. to yeah, to I need to come over there and see you live. Do you normally play with any specific artists that you like to tour with and and do shows with? We well, we already. I think we had like seven shows. Seven shows so far. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot. And we will have three more this year but two of them are sold out already and the other one is the festival so so that's all for for this year so we don't really play a lot and when we play we try to to go on places that are ex exciting and interesting and playing with bands that are not typical so exciting bands and exciting venues that's what we are looking for so, cool. so I, I wouldn't say that that we we are going with someone specific because we, we don't which every time is different well hopefully do you record anything video uh any live videos so you would yes, have, like, have you can show? you can look it up on on youtube okay it's, uh, well our last gig was recorded and it's a youtube it, it was in, in budapest park which is a huge venue and we play there in may so there are, I think, six songs, 25 minutes footage on, on YouTube. So it's official. And also we have a, a live album re released last year, which was kind of a sort of different thing because it was 26 people. So it's not, not a recent current band, but it was a, a one a one off. But yeah. it's, still, it's still a professional recording. Yeah. That's awesome. No, now we're running out of time, but I do want to ask you, so supporters in North America, Europe, wherever, how how can they best support you? I want you to have an unash unabashed, unashamed self-promotion um, moment here. How can we best support you? Is it purchasing merchandise? Is it sharing your music? Well, what, what would you say? Well, you know, we are at Season of Mist. So mm -hmm. I think Season of Mist has a good uh, marketing system and, and you can you can purchase the whatever you like. So that, that's that's what you can do. I think you cannot do anything else, basically, because we cannot go over. And but everything is available from the system of the shop. So okay. I would just say, just go and listen to the music. And if you like, just, just buy something. If, if you don't like it, then that's fine. It's OK. But you know, things are available. So you can buy them if you want to. Cool. So what else would you like to share before we part ways? Anything interesting you'd like to share with your fans? All right. Well, thank you very much for having me. I, I At the moment, I cannot really say anything except that I'm working on the next album. Right at the moment, right now. And Already. You just released a new one and you're working on a new one. Yes, but you know how it goes. It, it, was, it, it was submitted to the label like one year and a half ago. So it's it's like there's a there's a big time gaps. So I I have started working on the next one one year ago. So I'm just finishing now the next one. But it will be released again, I think in 2024, the, okay. at the earliest. So it it's it's being written and it's being mixed actually right now. It's gonna be more melodic and more experimental again. Oh okay. 
Awesome. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very melodic, actually. But you know, I, I just I just want to do what I I feel like. So this time it was like, why not getting getting a bit more groovy? So it's gonna be groovy. Now, if I take a cool picture of myself out in the wilderness and you like it, would you use me for your album cover? Well, it depends. I'm, well, I'll, I, I'll send I, it I your never, way. I never say no. I, you know, I, I like wide ideas, and I never say no if it's something. Something is like, like, very thought provoking or or just exciting. I I consider. You don't want me on your album cover, but <laughs> you have some really you have some really cool covers so far, and the photography is awesome. So I love it. Thank really you very good. much. I have I have a plan for the next one as well. So okay, it's, cool. It's already taken. Okay, so I need to shoot for 2025, 26. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Maybe down the road, maybe album mm -hmm. 40. Okay. So well, guys, this has been Thy Falk. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it, Tomas. Or Kataya Tomas. So thank, thank you, you for joining us. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.